Hello, Psych2530. This is a short video about a tool that you could use in this class and other classes as you do your undergraduate degree. I think it'll be really helpful. It's called Zotero, and uh, here's the website, zotero.org. I'll link to it. It's, they're billing itself as, the, uh, pers as your personal research assistant. So if you haven't heard of this, uh, you can go to this website and download this software for free. It's really helpful for uh, research purposes, for saving and storing research articles, and for helping you uh, to find them, search them, read them, and cite them in your papers. There's a whole bunch of things you can do with Zotero. Let me give you a little tour. So we're just gonna jump over. I've opened up the program on my computer, and as you can see, I've got uh, all of these things that we're looking at are just different research articles. So for example, um, if I went to this folder, we've got some different articles on cognitive control. And I could click an article, and um, if I click down here, I could uh, open up the PDF and, and read it if I want. So it's a library for research articles. That's one main thing. Uh, each of the articles also has metadata and this saves the title the authors the journal all the things you need for a citation okay there's some pretty cool things you can do if you had a whole bunch of papers in here like uh, let's say like like what i have um, maybe you're, you're writing a paper for one of your classes and you've got a few citation uh, a few papers that you need to cite if you're doing a long, longer paper and you've got uh, this many citations. With Zotero, you can uh, click all of the papers that you have and automatically create a bibliography that you can put in your paper. So let me just show you quickly how to do that. This is a really nice win that you get using Zotero. I'm just going to right click and there's an option to create bibliography from items. And here, um, we can actually export it in lots of different formats, including, for our purposes, the APA 7th edition. Uh, we can export it in different ways. I'm just going to say bibliography, copy to clipboard, and press OK. Now I'm going to open up Microsoft Word. There we go. And I'm just going to paste right in there. And check that out. We have a double-spaced uh, properly formatted APA citation reference section that you could use in one of your papers. And this really cuts down on the work that you need to do to write these types of things. So I think uh, it's one great reason to use Zotero, and I'll show you a few more. One of the things to note is that if there's a mistake in the metadata, it will show up when you print it out. I'm not sure if I can spot one here. Um, oh, here's an example. This paper um, it is missing both of the pages. It, it has a 665, so is that the first page or the last page? I don't know. This sometimes happens when you obtain the metadata automatically, and I'll show you how to do that later. So you'd have to go and edit that. So I think we were looking at um, this paper right here. It had incorrect metadata you need to go in here and change this 665. So for example, I could look at the paper and um, it's 665 to 682, great. And if I was trying to be really careful, I would do dash 682, great. And that's saved and the next time I export that reference, it will be correctly formatted. So let's jump into some few, a few more things. When you get Zotero to begin with, uh, you won't have any folders like this, it'll just be blank. You can go in your library and create new collections. So let's just do that. I'm going to do test 2530. And I've got a new folder here that I could be adding uh, research articles to. So how do you do that? How do you add something to Zotero? Well, there's more than one way to do it. Let's say you already had some PDFs on your computer of different uh, research articles that you downloaded from the internet. You could just drag them right onto here. 
And let me show you an example of doing that. All right, I went and downloaded a couple PDFs. These happen to be some publications I have, and I've got them on my computer. I'm just dragging them right onto Zotero. And let's see what happens here. So first of all, the PDFs get loaded in. And if you're connected to the internet, notice that Zotero goes and tries to find the metadata for each of these PDFs, which is pretty cool. It doesn't take too long. Um, let's see, is it finished? It says it's finished. I'm gonna press close and get rid of that. Uh, so we started with just these PDF files and it went and added all the citation information. So in here we could now easily read the paper if we wanted to and or we could take a look at the citation information and we could do that same thing we did last time which is um, copy out the bibliography and um, paste it into a document that we're writing. So this is pretty quick. If you need to make some bibliographies and you've got a couple papers, toss them into Zotero, get the metadata, double check that it's correct, and then paste out your bibliographies. Okay, here's another way to use Zotero. Let's say you're at the beginning of a research project and you're looking for uh, some papers. You, you're doing your research, you're trying to figure out what you need to read and uh, you can do that lots of different ways. One place I like to start usually is uh, Google Scholar. So I might go here and type in some keywords that I'm looking for to see if I can find some articles. Or I might go to the Brooklyn College Library and type in uh, things here to, to see what I could find. And then what do you do with the articles? You might just download them to your computer and have them in a disorganized downloads file. Zotero provides some convenient solutions to help you uh, organize your things as you're doing the research. They come in the form of connectors for your browsers. So they have connectors for Safari, uh, Chrome, Firefox, and whatever that one is. They, and so you can get them for your browsers. I've got this installed for Safari, and let me show you how it works. It's pretty neat. Um, let's see, so in class we've been talking about all sorts of things and this week I believe we're doing the associations module. So maybe you're interested in associations. How many associations can people remember? You might try something like this. And okay, so we got a paper here that is in the journal Cognitive Science. It's called, How Much Do People Remember? Some Estimates of the Quantity of Learned Information in Long-Term Memory. Maybe not exactly what we wanted, but for the, let's say, let's say you wanted to read some of these papers here. Um, in Google Scholar, if there's a PDF link on the right-hand side, this often means you can download the paper just by clicking the link. And uh, it looks like a lot of uh, the papers that came up here, we might be able to download. If you have the Zotero connector installed, it'll appear a little differently in each browser. For Safari, it's right here, it's this folder. And um, if you click this folder on a page like Google Scholar, it shows all the different articles that are listed there in this Google Scholar page. And you could click the ones that you might wanna download. So let's say I want to read these four papers. I click them, I press okay and they automatically get downloaded into whatever Zotero folder I currently had open. So I was in the test 2530 folder when I pressed that button. So all those papers uh, now appear in here. And it looks like some of them also pulled the PDFs and some of them didn't. So I think, for example, this paper right here, how we forget blah, 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 it came along with the PDF, which is great. Oh, it looks like some of the other ones did too. So everything came with the PDF. And so that's super fast. Uh, this should also work at the Brooklyn College Library. And we can test an example there just to see. So we could go over to the Brooklyn College Library and uh, I have to think of a paper. Give me a second. All right, what I did was I skipped ahead 
to our ninth module on implicit cognition. We'll get there eventually. And one of the writing assignments has to do with reading a paper called Remembering by the Seat of Your Pants. It's a very interesting paper. It's a fun paper. It's from 2005. Here's the citation. Now we could copy this into Google Scholar, try to find the paper. Um, we could also use the Brooklyn College Library because as students, you all have access to that and you can get all the manuscripts for free that we're talking about in this class. You might notice a link here. This is a DOI link. DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier and it's a way to identify specific articles. Oftentimes you can just take this DOI if you see one and when you go to Brooklyn College Library you can put it in the OneSearch tool. Let's see if it works. I haven't actually tried it for this paper and it says no records found. Ah, uh, too bad. It, it does work quite a, quite a lot. Uh, not this time, I guess. So let's see if we took the citation, put it in Brooklyn College OneSearch. Oh, that did a good job. It found the paper. Here it is, Remembering by the Seat of Your Pants. And it says uh, available online. And we could click this. Let's uh, see what happens. If you're off campus, you will have to do a login. So let's do that. All right, I logged in and here we are at the paper. And in this case, you could just read the paper online if you wanted to. There is a download link, right? We can get the PDF right here. And this page should be working with Sotero as well. So if we click this icon, then um, it's gonna save all of this to our Zotero folder, and we could go back there and read this paper later on. All right, so those are some really uh, great features of Zotero to help you find research papers and organize them. Uh, by the way, it also works for websites and other types of uh, media that you might want to cite. Let me show you another great feature called Cite While You Write Using Zotero. So let's say you had Microsoft Word open. Well, actually, let me just show you this website here. It's possible to get plugins for different word processors. Uh, when you install Zotero these days, it automatically installs plugins for Microsoft Word. So you should be able to find this when you open up Microsoft Word. Let me show you what it does. Here I've got a blank document and I'm writing a paper. Okay, let's say I want to cite something. Um, so there, I don't know, there was a paper that uh, had a chair that people sat on. Terrible sentence, <laughs> but um, and actually in that paper about remembering by the seat of your pants, there's a special chair that people sat on. And you might want to cite that paper at this point in your article. And here's what I'm uh, gonna show you. So in, in the Microsoft Word application, you've got all these different things here and you can't see it because it's so small, but if you uh, look at all the other options, there's a Zotero one that's there. And you can add citations. So if we do that, it's going to bring up a search bar. And if you can remember things like, um, let's see, a seat of, yeah, there's the paper. It automatically finds remembering by the seat of your pants. So I can click that. It's the author's Goldinger and Hansen in 2005. And if I press return, it pops the citation right into the paper. Okay, I can uh, continue writing. And if I want to cite more things, uh, all I need to do is add the citation here and uh, find papers to cite. So you can pick multiple papers. Maybe you want to cite this one, and I want to cite uh, this one here, and it's just going to pop those things in right, it, right into my paper. So let's say you wrote your whole paper and you added citations where you needed to this way. It's possible to 
add your bibliography at the end by clicking this button and it's going to go and um, figure out the papers that you've cited using this cite while you write tool and that's going to pop the bibliography into the end of your document just like this and this is a very fast way to manage the process of citing work um, that you're referencing in your papers. All right, one more tool I will show you here. If you have a bunch of papers, it's uh, a whole process of reading them and trying to make sense of them. It's possible to use Zotero for note taking while you're reading things. I'm not sure if it's gonna be super easy for me to show you all of this considering how small the screen is, but there's some little options up here to add notes. So for example, I'm going to click this and say new standalone note. And where did that go? Uh, my Outlook decided to update the so new standalone note. Okay, here it is. Um, so this is a little window that pops up uh, notes about these papers. I can start typing notes and just make notes. It's uh, basically a little text editor. So that's cool. It also, okay, let me see if, if I double click this. I think because the screen's so small, it's not, uh, oh, I see. Yeah, if I click this note, I can also see it appear on the side here. So it, it should be possible to do something like read a paper and look at notes at the same time so that you can yeah, do it all at the same time. Uh, let's see, this one, no, oh, that's the metadata. Yeah, so for example, I might want to take notes as I'm reading these papers. It's possible to have notes inside. So let's say you're trying to figure out what this paper is about inside of this little grouping here. You've got the PDF for the paper, but you might want to make a what's called a child note. And how about this? Notes on uh, Goldinger and did I spell that right? Not too sure. So as you're reading the paper, you can type stuff in here. And it's pretty cool uh, what you can do, actually. Let's say you're reading this paper and you really liked this sentence. If you were to copy that and head over to your notes for this, right, and then paste it in, Does it show, this is a little small to see. As you can see, when it pasted it in, it's uh, doing the citation and the page number. And this can be helpful to keep track of things as you're going along. Um, right, so the note taking feature is pretty useful. It does the metadata for your PDFs. It helps you make these bibliographies check out Zotero, it's totally free. I haven't mentioned a few other things you can do with it. Um, I'll just sign off by mentioning them. You can do Zotero in the cloud. So if you get a free account with them, then in addition to being able to download this tool onto your desktop, there's a cloud version. You can access it through a web browser. You can get it on other kinds of devices like your phone and a tablet. And you can even create shared libraries and yeah, uh, share them around with friends and, and have different people contribute to these things. So for example, in our textbook, you know, at the end of every chapter, there's all the different citations for that chapter. And I have a very large uh, Zotero library for the textbook that has, you know, all the different citations in there and that's how I managed that process of citing everything. So that's it for now. Uh, check out Zotero and I hope this was useful.